my name is Vince Farrell and I'm a senior applications engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. I wanted to make this video to go over some basics of electrical routing. This will show you out of the box functionality as well as a more in-depth workflow. To start with, SolidWorks Routing is an add-in that's available with a SolidWorks Premium license. I'm working on a simplified PCB assembly in an enclosure and I've removed the front walls for clarity. I'll turn on the routing add-in and see that it adds more tabs to my command manager. These tabs will be available when I'm in an assembly. If I want to use the out-of-the-box connectors and cables, I can go to the electrical tab and select start by drag drop. That opens up the design library in the task pane and navigates to the electrical subfolder. You can also browse directly to this folder in the design library and drag the connector into the assembly without using that command. I see the three pin female connector that I'd like to use and I'll drop it on the fan. See how it snaps to the connector on the fan? There's a mate reference in both of these parts that causes that behavior. I'll talk about that more later. The route properties opens up and here I can change the type of route and OD. I'll leave this as default. Next the auto route dialog opens up. This tool is really helpful in electrical routing but we're only going to use the auto route option in this video. I'll drag a second connector and drop it onto the PCB. There are stubs on the ends of the connector that will serve as places to start and end the routes. I'll click on the end point of the fan connector. There's a clip in the assembly that has an axis that I can route through and then I'll finish by selecting the stub on the PCB connector. There's no electrical data in here until I edit the wires, so I'll do that and select a blue wire. I can select multiple wires as well. I'll assign the data to the spline and exit out of the route. Now we can see all of the components of the route that are saved in the subassembly. I'll open it in its own window to create a drawing of it. I need to flatten the route and once I do, I can make a drawing of it by clicking on these various options. This is a nice 2D representation of the harness. Going back to the parent assembly, I can see a couple of connectors that I want to run a cable between. However, I need to create a connector and a custom cable library for it. I'll open up the SOLIDWORKS part I want to use. I need to use the routing library manager to convert this part to something routing recognizes. I'll click on the routing component wizard. First, I'll select the route type, electrical in this case. Next, I'll select connectors as the component type. Hitting next takes me to the next step. Now it's time to define the C points, which are the stubs that we saw in the three pin female connector. I need at least one, but I'm going to add in several. Just click add and it will take you to the part. I'm going to use these arcs to position the C points, but you can use sketches or other entities. Electrical is already chosen for the route type and harness for the subtype. Some parameters such as stub length can be set here. Also at the bottom I can assign pin information. Hit OK and it returns me to the wizard. Next is the option to add a mate reference. Since I want this part to snap to the other connector already in the assembly, I will create one. I need to name it the same as the other mate reference and select the appropriate faces and mate types. For more information on mate references, please check out my other video on our channel. Again, hitting OK returns me to the wizard and I'll hit Next. A check is performed to make sure there are no missing items and I'll hit Next. 
There's no design table in this part, so I'll go through to the next screen. Here I can put in different properties to the configuration and the part, like part number. I'll hit next and save the part. This will save it in the default design library. Going back to the assembly, I can add these two connectors to create my cable. When I start routing, I get an option to create a junction point. This will be the point where the wires join into the cable. I'm going to connect all of the stubs to those junction points. We could have just one C point here to simplify the routing, but then we wouldn't show the individual wires. Speaking of cables, I need to create a new one for this harness. This is another thing I need to use the routing library wizard for. I'll switch to the cable wire library wizard. I can create a new library or import one from an Excel format. However, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel and I'll use the existing library. We can see how the cables are specified with the overall cable and cores. I'll change the name of C1 and add another core to it. At this point, if I hit save, I will update the default library. However, I recommend using save as to save it as a different file and preserve the default library. I'll save this in another folder as well. Making it an XML will ensure it behaves like the default library. The last thing I need to do is to change the cable wire library location to the file I just created. Make sure you have that file location accessible whenever you need to use routing. SolidWorks will warn us that it's not in the default folder. I'll hit OK to save the locations. Now I'll take the same steps as before and add the cable to my harness. Since there are five cores, I'll assign one to each of the five wires. I can also assign the pin information. I'm assigning the wires manually, but you can create a from to list to do this automatically. Exiting out of the route will show off our hard work. Hopefully this video showed some basics to get you started with electrical routing. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel for more videos like this, and thanks for watching.